What's up, YouTube? This is Chris, a.k.a. Barnon11970. On Thank you, as always, for checking out my video. And uh, we got some interesting responses last night. Good or bad, I like it because it makes people think. So that is the purpose of what I try and talk about. Now, somebody, um, his name is Escape Mental Mike. We talk all the time. He's a good guy. And I respect the fact that he can say things in a way that... Uh, he definitely doesn't pull back his punches, but he definitely speaks his mind. And I want to make a subject about this. And it's actually kind of relevant, considering I had some very interesting dreams last night that I'd like to share that are important and relevant. But basically, his comment says, where's the truth in the last video I made? Because it's basically conjecture, which I can totally agree with that. I can understand that. Because if you really break down truth, and I'll put that in quotes, a person's truth is nothing more than their opinion, which means it's all a matter of perception. What's true to someone else may be different from somebody else seeing that same thing from a different perspective or a different point of view. So when I say, like, for example, the title, it says the real truth, that is the truth according to my perception. Now, there will be people who will resonate with it and agree with it. There will be people that'll see it as something that I don't like, I don't agree, that's not my perspective, I don't like it. So, in other words, to them, that's not truth. I mean, for example, you could talk about, let's say, murdering people. There are some people that say, sometimes it's justifiable. There are some people that say, well, it's not supposed to be done at all. And I'll use the example of the dream I had last night, because I have very div vivid, detailed dreams. And I had two major ones last night, and I'm going to focus on one. When I have very like important kind of dreams to try and send a message, they always end up seeming like it's a movie. Like, either I'm filming it or directing it, or I'm seeing it from the camera's perspective. But basically, it's a it was a dream about World War II, where it was near the end of the war, and the movie in the dream, is focusing on Hitler about to be captured. Now, he wasn't in a bunker. He went to some house that had some secret hiding room that he was hiding in. And basically, the soldiers end up finding him, and he overhears them say they're basically going to go in and kill him. So he decides, instead of being shot and murdered, he gives himself up. So he walks backwards out with his hands behind his back, suggesting he wants to be handcuffed, saying he's He's, he wants to give up, he'll give himself up. And the camera pulls the soldiers, and they're walking him to wherever they're walking him to, and he's actually, he's speaking in English. Obviously, if you watch movies, you know, they always translate, like, either aliens or foreign people's language always into English, which I always found that funny, but, you know, obviously, for obvious reasons, you have to do that. But he's, as he's handcuffed, and as the soldiers are on either side, walking him to an interrogation room or whatever, um... He's talking about how really sorry he was, how he felt bad for what he did. And the soldiers are kind of like, well, you know, you're just saying that because you got caught. And at one part, they sit him down at this wooden table and he's surrounded. On, he's on one side and there's soldiers basically kind of hovered all around, like celebrating how they finally got him and ended the war. And there's a woman soldier that's basically sitting there with a gun, keeping him from trying to escape. And he starts kind of talking about how easy things were and how he realized what he did wrong, but then he was getting into kind of like rubbing it in her face, where it's like, oh, it was so easy to take over like f the, Fr the French and how we overtook France and all these other places and how people – and she's like kind of crying but getting angry because she could sense that he's basically rubbing it in her face – and at one point she gets so mad that she pulls out her gun and puts it to his head and he's going to, and basically she's going to kill him. And all the soldiers kind of stop her and through all of the hustle and bustle and everything, he, Hitler ends up getting shot and killed. Now he was either going to go up for trial or be executed, or whatever, but those people decided that it was their job through their emotions to end up killing someone. And then it pans to another part of the scene where they're interrogating this girl and somebody kind of brings out a philosophy kind of thing. And he says, well, is it, is murder, murder at any time? And she's trying to justify saying, well, he did this. He was a bad person. He did that. So he deserved to die. 
and then in in the dream and it's amazing how how this really does hold water you know he says that if you're a religious person and you listen to the Bible's way of what the meanings behind it is, one of the rules is thou shall not kill. So when they murdered him, even though they said it was justifiable and obviously m the majority of people would agree because he was an evil person, when somebody else takes that gun and points it to someone and takes their life, aren't you now a murderer yourself? So that's a very, how do I put this? It definitely is going to split people because you're going to have some people that say murder is murder no matter what you do or who it is. And some say, well, it's okay every now and then. But then how can you really say you're a true religious person when you're not following what is in the essence of faith? And that is respecting of all life. Now, I'm not saying that somebody like Hitler should have gone scot-free and let him go. Obviously, you got to be punished for your crimes. And I'm not saying that people wouldn't be happy that they murdered him. But if you think about the bare essentials of what murder is all about, murder is taking the life of another. It doesn't say in any religious scripture as far as I know, that murder is wrong unless it's a bad person, then it's okay to murder them. And what happens is we use justification. So it's a belief system based on perception. I mean, you could think of like, for example, gay people. Now me personally, I have no problem with somebody, what they decide to do. Um, whether I agree with it or not is irrelevant. Uh, I personally, I don't agree with it. But I believe in a person's right. As long as they're not harming someone else, they're, they have the right to do whatever they want. That's my belief. That's my perception. There are some people out there that feel that it's wrong. There are some people that believe it so strongly that they would actually injure somebody or try and murder somebody because they don't agree with their choice of lifestyle. Does that make that person more right? Because there's judgment everywhere. And like in my video, when I talked about losing the name and somebody, and I won't mention their name because I respect the person and they have the right to their opinion, but they were saying that, you know, before you make, and they were saying to me, before you make your judgments, you should know more about it. Now, I never said it was bad. Like I said in the video several times, drowning in good intention. So I never said that the concept is wrong. What I'm saying is it kind of separates people to the point where the majority of people don't listen and it's not working the way it should and not fast enough. You know, there are plenty of good ideas out there that just may never work. That doesn't mean it's bad. But the point is when that person said to me, I shouldn't judge. Well, aren't they judging me? Because what I'm doing is expressing my opinion, my belief, my perception. And every single person has the right to do that. And there's, there's a method to my madness. Not only is that video that I made to try and get information out and try and vent what I feel and help others to better understand who may be confused or not sure what path to take. It also serves to see how people respond. And you can see how some people will be very judgmental, will be very critical or even angry. Instead of saying, wow, I may not agree with that, what that person is saying, but they have the right to say it. And until we get past that point of judgment, how are we ever going to go in the positive direction that we all really want? And that's, that's the truth from my perspective. It may not be from yours, but this society is very quick to judge, and you could blame the media for that, the TV. It's always about, you know, the selfies and glorification of athletes and movie stars. Like, for some reason, because they have more paper than anyone else, that they're supposed to be better. We're all of the same creation. 
So a lonely peasant and a high king are made from the same material. There shouldn't be class classes anymore because it separates. It's the divide and conquer. That means if you're a peasant and you're an aristocrat, oh, you're different and the aristocrats are supposed to be better? Why? Whatever happened to loving each other, caring about each other, worrying about each other? People are so much into themselves, the separation of the one. And that's the funny part. Like I was talking about the movie The Dark Crystal last night, and I watched it again, and I see so many different messages in there. When you know what to look for, you could see it's not an accident. And you see, like, for example, you had, and I remember what the names are, you had the, the Skeksis on one side and the Mystics on the other. And for a thousand years, they were separated. And for a thousand years, they did nothing. So the mystics did their praying, did their magic, did whatever they were doing separate. And the Skeksis were doing their evil, their corruption, their draining of people's energy. But until they decided, like, for example, the mystics decided to go there and get back and join together, that's when everything went into place. In other words, when they took action... And you notice the mystics, they didn't go there with machetes. They didn't go there with guns. They didn't go there to kill or hurt them. They went there just to rejoin and go back to each other and bring true love. And you notice when they joined together, they were peaceful. They were mythical, actually. They became almost a spiritual higher consciousness. And they realized their mistake. But when they got separated... They were enjoying the fruits of their lower dimensional vibration. And it's funny, because I always said this when I was a kid. In the beginning, when the, the old mystic is about to die, and he's talking to the Gelfling, the hero, and he shows where to find the crystal shard. It's in a mountain. Now, I always said, why does it look like the top of it looks like a brain? Until now that I know about the fact that they're talking about because you see that that monster that has the shard, that woman, she has the sign of Ares because she has the horns. She's got a third eye right there, conveniently enough, that they're talking about that it's in you. And when they show them walking into, like all the little layer things could be used as symbolism for your uh, nervous system. Like they're going into the brain. And they see the universe which is basically inside your brain. Now, how many people, when they research this stuff, actually know that they're talking about that everything is just a perception through what's inside your brain, that you're not seeing everything on the outside, it's actually inside. There's a lot of symbolism that people just may not even see or just see it as entertainment, just like I did when I was a kid. But it shows that whether you want to believe it or not, and again, belief is perception, it just depends on what level you're at and what mission you have to be here. Because we're all here for a reason. I, I cannot think that there's something, someone, or whatever that created the universe, because something created it. Because you can't have nothing and all of a sudden everything appears. I would love to know how they can explain how everything comes from nothing. So there's going to be obviously things that we don't understand and may never understand. Maybe it's not our job, because even if we understand, it doesn't change anything. But I can't see that we were all put here just to be random accidents. Then it shows, then that would mean that the person you fell in love with was just a coincidence, and the situations that help you in your times of need, just random lucky guesses, I guess. I, I, I just cannot believe that. But that doesn't make me right, just like it doesn't make anyone else right, because it's a matter of perception. Like, I was even kidding around, and Mike said this. The only He said the only thing that was even relevant in my video is the fact that I said this is, not, this is just a pen. Well, how does he know this is just a pen? What if this is also a secret spyglass? You ever see pens that you can open them up and they turn into little telescopes? Or how about, like, if you ever see those spy museums... 
where they, the spies used to have pens that you pull the trigger and it becomes a gun. It's about perception. So I said, this is just a pen, and he agreed, this is just a pen. But how does he really know it's just a pen? Coincidentally enough, he's right. But the point is, you can disguise things hidden in plain sight. Spies used to use stuff like this all the time. So if this was a one-shot gun and you just pulled this, well, the average person would say, oh, it's just a pen, until pulled the trigger and killed you with it. So I understand that things that I talk about may not be something you agree with, but until we get over this anger and this judgment and this hatred, how are we any different than the people that are in control who are judging us? thinking they're better than us. All I want is for the world to realize that we're all just human. And we shouldn't be labeled. Like, people ask me so many times, oh, what are you, a liberal? Are you a Republican? Are you this? I'm me. I don't want to be labeled because that's what causes the problem. Like, if you're in the Democratic Party, you basically, if you're a politician and you're labeled a Democrat, you have to go with what all the other Democrats are voting for. You can't go against them. And the same thing with the Republicans. So what it does is it labels you and corners you into a specific way. In other words, you're two-dimensional. I don't want to be labeled in any way. When somebody asks who I am, I am me. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a liberal. I'm not a conservative. I'm not anything other than me. Which means I can change my mind. I can change my ideas. I can discover new ideas. I don't have to be stuck in a certain way. But I believe, and again, it's my perception which gives me every right to do it, just like you have the right to judge me for it and hate me for it. Doesn't make it right, but you have the right to do that. I believe that people should all be the same. Not in the same in the sense that we're all human. Just because somebody's poor does not mean they're not a good person than somebody who's rich because they have a lot of paper. And until we could separate that, there's so much judgment. Not liking somebody just because of their color of their skin. Not liking somebody because of their sexual preference. Not liking someone because they're religious or not religious. Everybody judges, which makes all of us hypocrites, not just me. Because if you made a comment that was hateful, or if you made a comment pointing out my faults, then you're doing just the same thing you're judging. You have the right to do it, but that creates anger. It creates negativity. And that's why it's. I try so hard to be very delicate in what I say, because I know there are very sensitive people out there. There are very judgmental people. And there are obviously still people that love to hate. That is not the best way to live. Because in the end, the only person you hurt is yourself. Because while you're spending all that time hating, you're taking away the time you could be loving. So you're not really hurting me. When you're spending, like the people who spend their time trying to send hate to me, for every moment they're sending that hate is a moment they're not gaining a friend, a real friend, not an internet friend, because trust me, they change in a heartbeat. But to find a loved one, to help rescue a defenseless animal, or save a child, or make the world a better place, so who are you hurting? Me, who doesn't really lose any sleep over somebody sending a hateful message? Yeah, it might affect me for 13 seconds. But after that, you're no thought in my mind. But all you're doing is hurting yourself because you're spending your limited time in this world, on this earth, spending it hating? How is that helping your life? I don't know many people that really feel good about themselves when they hurt others, or at least try to hurt others. But they have that right. But if the majority of people are selfish, or egotistical, or vain, or judgmental, or angry, how are any of us complaining about the world that we live in? I mean, I know there are people who are awake. I know there are people who are trying to do their best. 
But in reality, and this is the reality that we decided to live in, because if you're watching this, obviously you're in the same reality, different perspectives, different beliefs, but same reality, otherwise you would not be seeing this, that the majority of the world is more worried about what's going on with Miley Cyrus and what's going on with the World Cup, what's going on with the president or wherever you are around the world then what can we do to heal the world? Because if that wasn't the case, there would not be millions of starving people in the world. There wouldn't be people who are alive today and will be gone tomorrow if we cared truly. Because all the money that countries spend on weapons and defending themselves from evil, if we took that money and gave it to the people or bought food, or built better water supplies for areas that are poor, the world would be healed. So do they really want that? Or they want the illusion of it to think, oh, well, you know, we make a lot of videos about it. We make a lot of commercials about it. They spent, I think somebody showed some, did some research on it, and they said they spent like a couple of hundred million or a couple of hundred billion dollars on commercials saying feed the hungry. Why didn't they just give it to the hungry? Wouldn't that have been better? So they don't really want to help. And in this world, it's it's basically, I noticed that the majority of people say, as long as I get mine, I'll be fine. And that's why I make these videos. Because it's not meant to be popular. Because obviously you could see, I've been doing this for three years, and I lose a lot of subscribers sometimes. I gain a lot. I gain more than I ever lose. But I get a lot of hatred, a lot of judgment, and uh, I'm definitely not going to be the next PewDiePie. It would definitely be easier for me to go off and make video game kind of videos or talk about things that are popular. But to me, this is important. And because I'm just human, I'm just me, I can only do it in the ways that I can understand and through my abilities. I mean, you got to work with what you have. But my essence and my heart and soul and the purpose of my videos is to try and get as many people as want to listen to see there are always better ways and how we have to look into ourselves. Because if you don't know yourself, how can you judge everyone else? And if all we want to do is justify murder and justify hate and justify everything that's wrong in this world just so we can feel better about ourselves and sleep better at night, I don't know. I, I just can't do that. And that's why I've been slowly doing my best to try and get out of this system as much as I can. To not contribute to it. To the best of my ability. And that's we can only do so much because we're on that slave ship. Can only go so far. So to the people who left the comments, I thank each and every one of them. Because I don't see it as hatred. I see it as them from their perspective. But make no mistake everybody judges especially when you're taking the time to tell someone else what they did wrong you're entitled to that but until we understand that people are allowed to have their opinions and that was one of the things i needed to learn i think that's one of the reasons why i was trolled so hard is because i needed to learn that when i put my judgments out there that it's going to cause a reaction and now when I see people's comments, and some of them are not nice, I realize that's their perspective, because what they're listening to from me does not resonate with them. But instead of them saying, well, he has the right to do it, they say, no, he's wrong, and I'm going to tell him why. Nobody's wrong and nobody's right, because it's a matter of perspective. Because... If you talk about, like I said in the, earlier in this video, about the dream I had about what somebody murdering Hitler, there are going to be people that say that it's perfectly justified. He got what he deserved. And there are going to be people on the other side that say all murder is wrong. Two wrongs don't make a right. Does that mean one side is right and one side's wrong? Well, that depends on what side you're on. And then you'll have people in the middle. See, what I'm getting at is there's so many different ways to go. There are no wrongs and there are no rights. It's nothing more than perception. 
So when I talk about truth, I'm talking about my truth and anyone else who listens to this and agrees. But it's just my perception. Just like the people who disagree, it's just their perception. If it works for you, then it's right for you. But it doesn't mean it's right. Because what is right? Again, matter of perception. So I'm going to end this video. Obviously, I make long videos because I like to talk, and there are some people who enjoy that. There's not going to be many, but if you're the one, two, or five people that watch to the end, I give you the thumbs up and I thank you. To those who shut it off a while ago, obviously, they're not going to see this message, and you're going to see in the comments, they're going to use their judgments, and they have the right to do it. And I thank you for them because it helps me to grow. But until we become a world of equality, where everybody is allowed to do whatever they want as long as they don't hurt others. In other words, if a person wants to date someone of the same sex, we shouldn't hate them for it, even if we don't agree with it. They have the right. As long as they're not forcing somebody else. Like, you can't go around molesting children. That's sick and that's wrong. And that's taking advantage of a youth. That should not be allowed. But if a person, if two grown adults decide that they love the person of the same sex, you sh you have no right to go and hurt that person because you don't believe in it. And like I said, I don't, I am not a person that believes that being gay is okay. That's just my thing. You know, man and woman, that's how you make creation. But that doesn't mean I'm going to see two people that, of the same sex and say, oh, I'm going to hurt them. I want to beat them up. No, they have the right to do whatever they want. It's their business, just like their own politics, just like their own, the comments. That's all I got to say. I thank you guys always for watching my video, especially the ones that watch to the end. Because especially when I say I'm going to end it, I end up getting to a whole other topic. That's just me. But uh, know thyself. And let's hear what you think about the, uh, the whole murder situation that I talked about in that dream. Let's hear your perspective. Thanks for watching, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.